What is so special about this cinematography? Because it's caught the eye of everyone that watches. Of course the sets are magnificent and the locations are quite literally palaces and castles, but the lighting, composition, lens choices, the list really goes on, just makes the cinematography of The Crown something special. The Crown is one of the most visually striking shows in recent years. Every episode offers something new with the cinematography, and today I want to look at how it has developed through the seasons. I know many cinematographers have worked on the show, but as Adriano Goldman has photographed 22 of the 40 episodes, including season 1 episode 1 and season 4 episode 3, the episodes we will be looking at today, I thought it was best to put him in the title. In today's video, I'll be looking at the three major aspects of the cinematography, where it will start, the pre-production process, what equipment they actually use to achieve the memorable look, as well as how to shoot a period drama. So how are they actually shooting these episodes? Because especially with the lenses, it changes everything about the look. On series 1 to 3, they use the Sony F55, a Super 35 4K cinema camera, and for season 4, they kept with Sony and went with their Cine Alta Venice, otherwise just known as Venice. This time however, the camera supported a full frame sensor. On to the more important aspect of the equipment though, we have the lenses. Now, for the first two seasons, the DPs used vintage Cook Speed Pancros as it takes place from 1947 to 1964, a total of 16 years. Seasons 3 and 4, however, were shot on Zeiss Super Speeds and spanned from 1964 to the early 1990s. Super Speeds are one of the most popular cinema lenses today, firstly because of how fast they are, but with a name like Super Speeds you expect them to be. They are also still vintage, but not as much as the Pancros, which are a brilliant choice for any period drama, mainly due to their ability to create a soft and vintage feel while still using a digital camera. When using them, you may notice their forgiving sharpness and warping. So, seeing as though Goldman is using different lenses for each time period, it will be interesting to see what he chooses for the final two series, because this time it's going to be a lot closer to present day than the 1950s. Which moves us on to how Adriano Goldman made The Crown look like a period drama, because looking at films from the last five years, for example Phantom Thread, The Crown looks extremely different, even though they are set in the exact same time period. But unlike Paul Thomas Anderson's preference for Phantom Thread to be dirtied up with smoke and filtration, Goldman went for a much cleaner look. The Crown is definitely a natural looking show though, and in fact, Goldman took a lot of inspiration from Harris Savides and his work on Gus Van Sant's Elephant and Jerry. After a few seasons, the directors know exactly what Goldman is trying to achieve and how he wants to achieve it. So what do you notice about this lighting? And I'll give you a clue, it's to do with the huge natural sources in the back of the majority of the shots. Goldman wanted the crown to look realistic, and one of the best ways to do that is to use huge natural looking sources. He would then fill the scene with practicals, regardless of if a scene was set during daytime or nighttime. With these huge sources, you would get an incredible wrap with the light, as it just encases the characters. But to put it in Goldman's words, the fall off is where I put my attention. Even when I have the ideal lighting situation where I have a soft sun outside with nets on my windows and it's all working to look very soft and beautiful, the fall off is still the focus of my attention. For the masters, Goldsman would attempt to have all of the lighting outside of the room so that the actors can rehearse more freely. Then once you move in closer for the medium and close-up shots, he would add soft LED sources. You also can't have any period drama without haze, and Goldman didn't hold back. He feels as though adding some helps the atmosphere, and even though it may look a little less natural, it adds to the mise-en-scene. Which also includes composition, and unlike season 1, Goldman wanted us to watch season 4 from afar, in an observational sort of way. We see this in the way of a lot of wide shots as well as seeing characters through items because whilst it also creates depth, it separates us from them. However, it seems different when Diana is on screen. There isn't nearly as much separation from her as there is with the other characters, even with Charles.
In one of the most memorable sequences in the entire show, Diana skates through Buckingham Palace in the centre of the frame. This isn't the only time that centre framing is used in the show, as it's used pretty much constantly. So what does centre framing actually mean? Because I know whenever I choose to use it, it's because I want the audience to focus on whatever I put there. But it can also be used to immerse the audience in the environment, as well as to show power. But also, as is the case with this scene, for fast cutting. In reality, there are countless ways to shoot a period drama, and as time goes on, it will change. But Goldman has done such an incredible job portraying each time period with such grace that it stands out amongst all other dramas set in this period. He's made the cinematography his own, as well as creating a style that other cinematographers that work on the show will be able to replicate without it looking off. But ultimately, how do you get started shooting a show like this? Where does it all begin? For instance, I didn't come to The Crown with any preconceived sort of ideas. Um, the, the, the lucky thing about being a DP is that when you land on a project like this, lots of research, you know, uh, had been done before by the, the, part, the design department and the location department. So you basically step onto something that somehow can eventually, uh, in this case, that was very much the case, uh, give you inspiration enough to, instead of starting from absolute scratch, because I don't like myself to relay, relay, to rely too much on, on visual references. As with most TV shows, there is a very long prep phase. Gordman would spend time with the directors discussing every single scene as they went through the script, and he would know how he wanted to light them before he would even arrive on set, mainly because it's such a simple and effective setup, as well as one that he's been using since series 1, episode 1. It's also important to Goldman to talk to the designers as much as possible, since they need to think about the practicality of the sets being built, as given his natural looking style, you'll need huge windows like the ones in the palaces that they are also shooting in and around. Working on The Crown has made me appreciate the influence that you can have as a cinematographer, by being part of a team for a long time. The kind of management power I have on the show is rare on feature films, everything goes through me at some point. Ultimately, apart from being one of the best written and acted shows of the past decade, it's also one of the most visually striking. You could sit down with an episode in front of you and immediately know that you are watching The Crown. This is my first cinematography breakdown surrounding a TV show, so if you have another show that you would like to see me break down, then leave a suggestion down below. I've also tried to structure and to edit this video a bit differently, so let me know what you think of it. If you found this video helpful, a thumbs up is appreciated, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, then hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.